Unify Protect has gotten really good lately, and it's not quite perfect yet, but it's gotten good enough for me to make the switch from Blue Iris after about five years. So in this video, I'm gonna show you why I think Unify Protect is so powerful and how you can utilize it to its full potential. Starting out with the cameras, it's true that Unify Protect supports third-party cameras now, and for the last year, I've been giving Unify Protect a trial run as a backup for my Blue Iris system using my nine OnViv cameras from Axis, Hikevision, Dawa, and Reolink. But non-Unify cameras are limited to 24-7 recording only, and to get the most out of Unify Protect, you really need to use Unify cameras. Unfortunately, Unify cameras have been historically pricey with just middle of the road performance, but the G5 lineup of cameras started to change that, and the G6 cameras have extremely competitive performance with 1 over 1.8 inch and 1 over 1.2 inch sensors combined with very reasonable prices. So to be able to get the full Unify Protect experience, I upgraded my pool camera from the $199 Anki AC800 to the $279 Unify G6 Dome. I switched out my $950 Axis P3268 on my front door with a $199 G6 turret. In my side yard, I replaced my $500 Anki Speed Dome PTZ with the $399 G6 PTZ with dual lenses for hybrid zoom. To effectively cover the side door of my patio and sliding glass door, I upgraded my $159 Hike Vision 2385 to the top of the line $479 G6 Pro Bullet, specifically for its optical zoom and massive 1 over 1.2 inch image sensor. And last, I added a camera pointed at the other entrance of my patio using the $179 Wi-Fi G6 Instant, which is by far the best Wi-Fi camera that I've ever tested, with the same 1 over 1.8 inch image sensor that the rest of the G6 non-pro lineup uses. And they all record at 4K 30 frames per second and have all of Unify Protect's smart detections. I will eventually replace my Dawa panoramic dual lens camera with Unify's G6 180, but until that comes out, I'm just adding my current Dawa to Unify Protect using OnVIF, but I'm also connecting the $199 AI port, which basically converts any camera into a fully Protect compatible one with smart detections. And now that I've got a full set of compatible cameras installed, I can take advantage of all the features in Unify Protect 6.1, starting with the one that I think is most impactful and unique. Unify cameras now allow you to set up specific zones where your camera can dedicate a higher proportion of its bitrate. So if you have a particular region that you're interested in, you can tell Unify Protect to do less video compression in that specific area. And if you have something that moves around a lot, like a tree or an AC fan that you don't necessarily need to record, but would normally eat up a lot of bitrate, you can also create a zone to tell Protect to increase the compression in that area, which then frees up extra bitrate for the rest of the image. And the results are immediately noticeable, even in the live view but they are especially obvious when you're scrubbing through timeline footage where the enhanced bitrate zone stays clear while the rest of the image shows compression artifacts. Zones are also extremely useful for defining notifications and alarms later on, so I would recommend at a minimum going in and setting up zones for the different security levels on your property. For instance, a yard crew may come into my backyard during the day and I don't need to be notified of that, but if there's an unknown person inside of my patio space, I wanna be notified immediately. So I set up zones on each of my patio cameras, designating the inside of the patio from the outside. Speaking of, while G4 and G5 cameras both technically had line crossing options, they were of limited usefulness because you couldn't define a direction for the line crossing. But on the G6 cameras, they finally added directionality so you can get notified if someone enters an area without also being notified when somebody leaves the area. Zones also allow you to define different areas to do different detection types, which in turn allows you to control when PTZ cameras start auto tracking. And in my my front yard I've always kept PTZ auto tracking off because it would follow people down the street who were just riding bikes or working out and I always thought it was kind of creepy. But by using zones I can set up the person detection only on my property which then stops the camera from auto tracking outside of that zone. Moving on to Unify Protect detections, we'll start on the normal playback menu where you've got your normal smart detections on the bottom for person, face, vehicle, license plates, and animals but the real killer feature for me is grid search. Let's say I want to search through the last week of footage for people sitting on this couch. That would be a ton of detections to sift through. But with grid search, I can narrow it down and show only the detections that happen in this specific region. If you wanna go one step further than that, Unify also has a local AI processor that's called their AI key that adds another level of detection to your Protect NVR. And in the playback window, you can utilize it by clicking on the Edge AI ReID button. 
and it will scan the image for a detection object, and then you can click on each object to search across your cameras for other times that that same person has appeared. And you also get a slider to change the confidence level that will either show more results or less results. And that's definitely pretty cool, but the biggest feature that the AI key adds is under the relatively new Find Anything tab, which gives you a bunch of options for narrowing down your search criteria for things like helmets, glasses, backpacks, clothing type, and color. But you can also just skip all that and use natural language in the Find Anything search bar because the AI key generates a summary of what each image shows. So you can search for something like work van to parse through all the contractors who were in your area at the selected time period. And all this gets handled locally without any connection to the cloud. And even though it is really useful in the detections menu, its biggest strength is with Alarm Manager. And Alarm Manager is one of those things that looks really overwhelming at first, but it's actually pretty easy to use. And if you're not already using any of Unify's start starter alarms, I'd recommend just deleting them and making your own, starting out with something simple like sending a mobile notification when a person is detected in some secure zone that you've defined. So create a new alarm, then select object person as the trigger, then select your specific secure zone as the scope, and last select notify with all the protect users that should get notified for that specific zone. Then name your alarm and hit save. And on the main page, you can toggle both the mobile and email notifications on and off. And you can also define a schedule and geofencing for each notification. But you can also get much more specific. And there are a lot of ways to accomplish similar alarms. Let's say for instance, that I wanna get a notification when my daughter comes home from school every single day. One way I could do that is to set up a line crossing alert going from the walkway to the door. And then within three seconds, it also needs to detect my daughter's face. And when both of those things are true, it can send me a notification with the custom message that Scarlett is home. And that would absolutely work, but you could also do it totally with AI and just type in Scarlett with a backpack and then dial in that precision slider to get an appropriate amount of accuracy and then set up a schedule that only fires the alert after school gets out for the day. For instance, between three and 6 p.m. If you are a Home Assistant user, Alarm Manager also has the ability to interface with Home Assistant using both incoming and outgoing webhooks. For instance, I have an entity in Home Assistant that's called Exterior Notifications that gets activated while we're sleeping and anytime both my wife and I are out of the house. And the current functionality is to send a notification anytime a door or a window opens. But using Alarm Manager, I can also add a notification for if someone's detected inside of our patio while the exterior notification switch is on in Home Assistant. To do that, I'll create a new alarm, I'll select objects, person, and then define the scope as the zones that are inside the patio space. And then for the trigger, I'll select webhook. Then in Home Assistant, I'll create a new automation with the trigger being a webhook, copy that webhook ID, and then go back to Unify Protect. There I will select custom webhook and I'll put in my Home Assistant URL, front slash API, front slash webhook, and then I'll paste in that webhook ID. And this alarm inside Protect will send a webhook to Home Assistant anytime a person is detected in that area. But I only wanna get a notification when the exterior notification input Boolean is on. So back in Home Assistant, I can add a condition that the exterior notifications are on, and then I can add an action to send a notification via Home Assistant to my phone with a custom message and even a live feed from the cameras. And that leads me into the last reason why Unify Protect is so good right now, which is the rock solid integration with Home Assistant where each camera has a separate entity for each smart detection type, a live view for each camera, and the ability to toggle almost every option on or off with automations. For instance, I'm using the person detection on my three patio cameras to determine if the patio is empty. And if someone then forgot to turn off the pergola fan or the ceiling fan, it will automatically turn those off after 15 minutes of no person detection. And I'm also using a similar automation in the garage to turn off the garage lights after two minutes if there are no people detected. And I wanna make it clear that I am in no way saying that Unify Protect is the only way to accomplish all these things, but what I am saying is that compared to Blue Iris, Frigate, and Reolink, which I have also used fairly extensively, Unify Protect has just the right balance of user friendliness and features to be able to accomplish everything that I wanna do without needing to troubleshoot every few weeks. If you are coming from Blue Iris, I do still have a few nitpicks with the Unify Protect web interface, like the inability to change window sizes to accommodate panoramic resolutions or hallway orientations, and I still don't understand why they make you use that little box in the bottom corner to move around a zoomed in image instead of just being able to click on the screen, but ultimately those are super minor things, and overall I have been extremely extremely happy with the Switch. As always, I don't make any sponsored content on this channel, but if you are interested in picking up any of the Unify gear that I'm using, I've got links for all this stuff down in the description. And as always, I appreciate when you use those links since as an affiliate, I do earn a small commission on the sale at no cost to you. I'd also like to thank all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for their continued support of my channel. And if you're interested in contributing, please check out the links down in the description. 
If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.